Whoa. Thank you, Carl. Mike on the mic. Hi all, I'm Michael Bergen. I am the VR Global Alliances Manager for NVIDIA, based at headquarters in Santa Clara, California. Uh, how many people here actually work in VR? Okay, a couple. How many people have used VR? Cool, how many people just want to win stuff? Hey, I appreciate the honesty. So I'll talk quickly so we can get to the drawing. Uh, virtual reality, augmented reality, XR as you, as you will, is a wonderful technology, but right now it's kind of more of a magic trick. Oh look, I'm someplace I'm not. And we're working hard to bring it from magic trick to actual working facility. A tool just like any other that you would use to design parts, buildings, cars, what have you. So for designers, for training, we can use it for training and in dangerous situations, uh, gas and oil, or power plants, nuclear facilities. Uh, we can use it for training in retail for cost savings, so either to save people from dangerous situations or to save money. Uh, some of the larger retailers in the world are using VR training for their management so they can have a consistent training environment without having to travel everybody from around the country to headquarters. The trade-off with uh, VR is keeping quality high and frame rate high. As anybody who's ever done VR knows, there is a propensity to motion sickness. And one of the many ways to combat that is to keep the frame rate at at least 90 frames a second. Which is great, because 90 frames a second, powerful video card. We have some, as you can see over there, some lovely Quadro RTX video cards. You know, just buy 10 RTX 8000s and you can't really expect your users to do that. So how do you creep across the board, even on a GeForce RTX card, frame rate high and quality high? Well, the way we approach this is we thought, why render the entire frame at the highest possible quality? We don't need to do that because you're not looking at the entire frame at once. So if you're looking at a particular region of the frame, we'll render that very high quality, and then we'll vary the, shade, the, the rate of shading as we drop off. Hence, variable rate shading. It's what happens when engineers name products. So if this grid here, each of these green dots is a pixel. We can render one shader pass per every four by four grid of pixels or we could use one shader pass for a two by two grid of pixels, or for a one by one or a single pixel, or we can keep going with that equation and use more than one shader pass per pixel. We call that super sampling. So two times super sampling, four times super sampling, or eight times, so eight shader passes per pixel, which makes extremely high visual quality, but low frame rates. So the way we do that trade-off is by rendering the part of this you're looking at in a higher quality. At the bottom of this slide, you'll see there's three different ways we have to render uh, VRS. The first is lens optimized. If you're using an HMD that doesn't have eye tracking, lenses by their nature, the center of the lens is more clear, and as you drop off, it gets blurrier. So let's render the center of the lens the most clearly. Foveated rendering, like we have in the awesome HTC Vive Pro Eye, we can actually track the eye, and where you're looking, we render in high quality, and what you're not looking at, we can drop off the quality. And that can be very dynamic. But let's say you're moving your eyes around, and you, as the application developer, want something to look particularly good at all times, your hero image, your hero texture, what have you. You could make an exception by using what's called content adaptive shading. Uh, so you can say, make this carbon fiber, for example, an exception to the foveated rendering such that it always looks good. And by the way, the variable rate shading VRS is available now as part of our VRWorks SDK at developer.nvidia.com slash VRWorks. We have a number of tools in our VRWorks SDK that we invite you to come play with. As I mentioned, right now the state of the art for eye tracking is commercial, it's available now. Um, I am thrilled to have Dario here from HTC. They've been great partners, I mean fantastic partners in this, to create a commercial, a viable, and available eye tracking HMD to really optimize the visual acuity and the speed and performance in VR. 
There's two different methods for VRS, and this is a 20 minute booth talk, so I'm not going to read the eye chart, but please ping me and uh, I will get you this information. The short version is VRS is something that you implement through the SDK, and it's fully featured. It's, you can use it with DX11, DX12, OpenGL, Vulkan, any engine you want. You can configure it to your heart's desire. It works across pretty much anything you want to do. We also have a much more simplified version called VRS Wrapper that only works if you're using foveated content, for example, the HTC Vive Pro I, on DX11, forward rendered with MSAA anti-aliasing. If, you fit, if your application fits all that, and really it's a lot of applications do, you can use what's called the VRS wrapper to very quickly and very easily implement VRS. And again, this is part of the same SDK that you'll download at developer.nvidia.com slash VRWorks. I'm gonna leave this here for Dario with just a few of the many applications that have enabled VRS. And I just wanted to throw some up here just to a, approach a few different ways of looking at the world. So Zero Light, their model is car configurators. So when you're at a dealership and you want to buy whatever car, Audi, Cadillac, Porsche, BMW, whatever, you go through the configurator in VR, you can see your car with all the options that you choose in real time with variable rate shading, so very high quality. Ovation, they do some really cool stuff. They actually teach people how to do public speaking how to make eye contact. So they have a speech on a teleprompter to give the speech. Afterwards, it will tell you, did you meet the eyes of the people in the audience? Did you, uh, er, um, like, and then uh, it will track your in-between words. It will track your motion. It will track all these things and rate you on how well you did public speaking to make you a better public speaker. Uh, Quiver is a game. It's a, it's a tower defense game arrow shooting game has quiver because pull the arrows. Uh, but again, it's using VRS and eye tracking to make sure that what you're looking at is where the action is happening. And of course, the demo we're showing right here in the booth is VRED from Autodesk, which is the premier standard for creating and designing cars. And this is actually a beta demo build that they built. This is coming, it's a preview build. But VRED has implemented VRS and that's what we're using to show this demo. So with a very high level overview of VRS, I'm going to hand it over to Dario and uh, I'll be around for questions after. Hi everyone. I'm Dario, I'm a senior developer evangelist at HTC. I'm uh, really excited to be here. Thanks, Mike. Great overview. Uh, just looking at this slide, Ovations is one that I really like. Not just because I do public speaking, I need to get better at it, but it really does an analysis and you see heat maps of where you've looked at. Uh, and that's, that's a common requirement for a lot of these develop, uh, use cases where you want to collect analytics. Uh, so there's a lot you can do with eye tracking. I'm not going to go through all the possible use cases. We're actually looking for new use cases for eye tracking. But, uh, so we can get our SDKs at developer.vive.com. Pretty easy to remember, just like developer.nvidia.com. So just go to both sites. We have plugins for your favorite engines. How, how many here develop in Unity? How about Unreal? It's a good number. Uh, so yes, we have uh, the ability to support both the engines. Uh, and for developers, it's just easy. So for example, in Unity, you just drop a script right onto the camera. You pretty much have it working. Uh, but you have all these options. Uh, you, uh, Mike had mentioned all these the possibility of doing super sampling. It's actually the, the possibility of doing under sampling as well. So you have multitude of options for a pixel rendering uh, and, and the sizes of the uh, phobiated uh, areas and, and so forth. So in addition to it being literally drop and, and run, uh, you, can, you have all these options. So I highly recommend uh, developers to start looking at the SDKs, uh, even, even before you get a, a iPro I. <laughs> It will inspire you to get one. Um, oh yes, you'll get the chance to play with the SDKs because you may actually walk away with one today. So, so I think I'm going to just break it off to uh, Q and A. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free. 
one of their use cases, I did not put their logo up, but they're uh, also here on the show floor, Rain VR, R-E-I-N, VR, Rain, real estate in VR, Rain VR. Um, they're doing something really cool. They're, they're home builders, and you can walk through a house uh, before it's built, obviously, or, a, or whatever building, and you can walk your client through, and afterwards, using analytics based on the eye tracking, it will tell you they spent 1% of their time looking at the view, and 40% of their time looking at the backsplash in the furniture, and 20% of their time looking at the appliances. So you, as a home builder, don't want to then go off about, the view is going to be incredible, because they don't care. You can tell that from where they've looked. So you can really tell not just that your user is in VR and what they're doing, but really where they're focusing and what their interest is and what's important to them, whether they even realize what's important to them or not. So there's a lot of really innovative use cases for eye tracking besides and in addition and in conjunction with variable rate shading. The other thing I wanted to mention is VRS is part of the Turing architecture. So you do need uh, an RTX, either a gaming card like a GeForce RTX 2080 or a professional card like the Quadro RTX 6000 or 8000. So the question is how much computational improvement is there in phobiated rendering? And the answer, of course, is it depends. So it depends on what else is happening in your scene, how large a foveation region you have to find, um, the quality of what you've defined in that foveated range, what engines you're running, how many GPUs. Uh, so the demo I'm showing here, we're getting we're getting a two X from 45 frames per second to 90 frames per second, and it's not a it's not a sandbagged. It's not designed to be a specifically lower versus higher. That's just by the nature of it what this particular instance and demo is getting but it's going to depend on your content. Yeah. The question is, do you have the power to define the foveated region? I'm going to go back to my eye chart for a second. So on the eye chart, you can see under VRS, um, fully customizable, arbitrary VRS pattern with super sampling, blah, 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 as opposed to the VRS wrapper, which has certain presets. But the uh, I don't want to get too close to the speaker. But VRS has lots of dials and knobs to turn to define how many regions, the size of the regions, the width of the foveated ellipses. And yeah, it's, it's very customizable. Yeah. And again, sorry for the eye chart. 